We'd like to welcome you all here this morning. We'll begin the service. We'll sing number 194, Prepare to Meet Thy God. Number 194. <laughs> Well, it's good to see all of you this morning. And to think about why we've come out here. Have we come out hungering and thirsting for righteousness this morning? Hungering and thirsting for spiritually spiritual food. And when we the song that we just sung there, prepare to meet thy God. Are we all in that condition today? Are we prepared to meet him? Is there one place there it says that you know, before tomorrow you may be called. And what would our condition be with you and with me today if that was the case? He says, O oh, foolish souls, O oh, careless soul, 
why would you linger? For your life will soon be gone. Oh, how sad to face the judgment, unprepared to meet thy God. And that will be a sad day for a lot of people. It will be a great day for the righteous. It will be a wonderful day for those that have prepared to meet him. Just as the five wise virgins prepared to meet the bridegroom. And they took oil with their lamps. And when the cry came at the midnight hour, they were willing, they were ready. And they were able to use the oil. They were able to go into the wedding. But there was five that was foolish that were not able. And when they finally came, it was too late. The door was shut. The marriage was in progress. And we've got such a wonderful opportunity today to know Jesus Christ. And I want to tell you, he is our only hope. I want you to think about that. He is our only hope. It's not how good that you are. Not what you have done here upon the earth. It's not what you have com accomplished, how successful you are, what your name might be. Our only hope is through Jesus Christ. We came here born in sin. But God sent His Son to overcome that and to live a righteous life. And the wrath of God was poured out on His Son for you and for me. And through Jesus Christ, through what He did, we can have hope of that eternal life that this book is full of, of talking about eternal life and how that we can receive it. And we can know it. And we can understand it. And we can have hope of that while we're here. And we can have that peace, that blessed peace. We can be assured of that eternal life. But only through Jesus Christ. Putting our faith and our trust in Him. Not in ourselves. Not in man. But in His Word, in His Gospel. And believing those things. And there's been a lot that has taken place throughout the years. There is a lot that is written here in this book that we can understand and we can know and we can be encouraged in. And let's keep that in mind. Let's turn this morning. I'd like to start reading today some. In Luke. will be in the 17th chapter of Luke. We'll start reading here. At the 20th verse, the 17th chapter of Luke, 20th verse. And I want us to think about what was taking place here. These are mostly words that Jesus Christ was teaching the people about, his words. And it says, And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. And that new spirit, that new birth, he says, can be and will be in each and every one that desires it. Each and every one that goes and asks for the kingdom, for the power to come within him. 
Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you, and I believe we'll lo and understand that, and I know that the righteous, and all I want everybody to know today that there is an opportunity for us. He says, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, but it is available to us all. And there will, the, that kingdom also, when he comes back here upon the earth, it will come at a time there when man is not looking for it. It will come for it in a time when man is saying that it is peace and all things are, are good. But he says he will come then upon the earth. Man will be just looking at it as these are just everyday things. Let's continue right on. Not putting his trust and faith in God. Not looking at his own condition and seeing, am I walking upright? Am I prepared to meet my God? And he said to the disciples, the days will come when you shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man and you shall not see it. And they shall say to you, see here and see there. Go not after them, nor follow them. For as the lightning that shineth out of one part under heaven shineth in another part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. And I want us to just look around and think today. First of all, he's saying, believe in him. He says there will come a day, and here he's talking there to his disciples that had been with him. And he says, yeah, there will come a day that you will desire to see one of the days when I was here with you and when you could communicate with me. And those days will be gone. But I know that we can still communicate with him. And he also said we can communicate with him spiritually, not the natural part that what he was talking to them about there, I believe. And they shall say to you, see here or see there, go not after them nor follow them. Be careful, he said, in what you follow. He says there will be people coming and talking to you and telling you that you need to do this or you need to do that so that you can live a righteous life. But he says... Be careful with that. Go not after them, nor follow them, he says. For as the lightning that lighteth, out of the one part unto heaven shineth unto the other part unto heaven, so shall the Son of Man be in his day. That that will come, there will come a time there. That people will be able to see. And in that final day when he comes here back to the earth, all mankind will be able to see through all, all the earth when you lightning may strike somewhere way off somewhere, but you can see it in the sky many, many miles away. And I know that he will be able, we will be able to see that part, that spirit, that God in Jesus Christ, all of those that want to be able to see it and know it and understand it can know those things here while they're here upon the earth. Because he will not hide that from them. Who He says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. All of these things are available to everyone that asks. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. Now, while he was here upon the earth, he says, there will come a time that people will be able to see. They'll see and acknowledge that I was the Son of God. And he says, but while I am here, he says, but first must suffer, he must suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. While he was here upon the earth, he was rejected of the Jews. There was only a few that accepted him in those days. They rejected him. They rejected his word. They rejected the power of God in him. They killed him. He laid down his life for us. They hung him on that tree. He allowed those things to happen to him because it was his father's will that that be done in him. And then in those days, that generation of wickedness, that generation of unrighteous, rejected the Word of God. And that has been going on all the way along since the beginning of time, basically, as we'll see and we'll read some about different things here today. 
But people have been rejecting the Word of God and losing their soul. We have an opportunity today to hear the Word and accept it and save your soul. Now what will the answer be with us? Listen, and as it was written in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man, as it was in the days of Noah. So shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank. They married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. They paid no attention to the preaching. Noah worked on that ark for somewhere from 100 to 120 years, if you go back and read some about that. doesn't say exactly, but it was a long time that he worked on that ark. And at that entire time, he was preaching and teaching and telling the people about what was fixing to happen here upon the earth. That there was going to come a rain that, that the earth had got, that mankind had gotten so wicked that had gone away from the word of God and got to where that even their thoughts was evil, it says. They had gotten totally away from that, basically. But God was giving them an opportunity to hear his word and to be saved. God was building. He said, he, I will destroy this earth with this flood. But he had this righteous man, Noah, here upon the earth that was willing to hear, willing to listen to what God had to say and had faith in what God was saying. He had never seen rain, but God told him that he would bring this storm, this rain, down upon the earth and flood the earth. Now, Noah, you build this ark. And I will send all the animals and everything here to you to go into that ark that they might be saved from the wrath that is going to be rained out upon the unrighteous here upon the earth. And he was able and he preached that for over a hundred years and he taught these people that. And how many people went into that ark? Only eight people. And there was thousands of people upon the earth at that time. But there was only eight people that went into that ark. Eight people that believed enough of what Noah was saying to say, I will go into that ark. I will put my faith in being in that ark and being saved rather than being outside of that ark. Now that ark is just like Jesus Christ. That our Jesus Christ is our only hope. The only hope of anybody surviving that flood was by being in that ark. And people didn't not believe that. The only hope today of having eternal life is through Jesus Christ. Now do you truly believe that? Are you willing to live in accordance with how he would have for us to live today? Those eight were saved. Likewise, also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Do you hear what they're talking? He's telling us, he's given us two examples here of some destruction that God brought upon an evil generation here. But what did God do in both situations there? He gave them an opportunity to do something about it. The people could have gotten into that ark. They were warned. Lot went out and he talked to his family and told them about what was about to happen there. But they paid him no attention and were destroyed. He says the same day that he went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them.
Even thus shall it be in the days as the Son of Man is revealed. What was going on there? That people were just going on on their everyday life. He said they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. Just going about putting their, that was all that they had on their mind of what, they were, what was going on there. Now, yes, we will have to, and those are things that have to be done so that we can survive here upon the earth. But that was all that they were putting their attention to. They were not putting any attention into seeking God, seeking His will, living a righteous life, keeping the law that he would have for them to keep. They were none of that. That was not what was on their mind. It was just, what can I do for myself? What can I do for myself? And go back in, in the days there at Noah, right before the flood, he said they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. All of these things were just going on. That was what they were putting all of their efforts in their mind into. Yes, there's nothing wrong with marriage. And we should be looking to the, all of those things if that is what we're seeking and living in the way that God would have for us to live with a wife or with a husband. But let's don't let that be first. Let's also be remembering. He said they did eat, they drank, they were just putting forth the effort to take care of this natural part and the lust of the natural part. They were not looking at what do I need to do, what must I do to save my soul. That was not what they were looking at at all. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone. Even though they paid it no attention, these things came down. And even thus shall it be in the days when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down and take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return. Now let's think about that just a little bit of what's taking place there. That in that day, when the Son of Man is revealed, let's say that the Son of Man is coming back and we can see that we hear that great trumpet and we see Him coming or we can feel that. Do you think that the righteous there, if they were involved in that, if He was on His house, He's going to go back into His house to try to get some of the things of this world that He might have? Not at all. And let them that, that's in the field. He's not going to return back to his house to see what he can get there of the natural things. He says here in this other verse, I believe he says, he says, and whosoever shall seek to save his life. Sorry, let me read that 31st verse there again. In that day, he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him not return likewise. Re whosoever, remember Lot's wife. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. Whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. What did Lot's wife do? She looked back there, having a desire to be back in that town where she was with all the things that she had that, those, to fulfill those fleshly desires that she had. She was not willing to leave it all. And here, when Son of Man has come, are you ready to leave it all? Are you ready to put it down? When He comes into your life, are you ready to just go with Him and not go back into that house that you came out of to try to see what you need to take with you? You need to take the Spirit of the Holy Ghost with you. Let Him not come down and take it away. To take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Just be ready when the Son of Man is revealed unto you.
is what I want you to see thinking about today. Not at that final day, but when it is revealed unto you, wherever it might be, wherever you might be, my friends, if the truth is revealed unto you, be ready to go straight forward. Don't look back. Don't think that I've got to go back and get the things of this world to come along with me. Put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. I tell you that in that night there shall be two in one, in one bed, the one shall be taken, the other left. Two women shall be grinding together, the one shall be taken, the other left. Two men shall be in the field, the one shall be taken, the other left. Think about what he's talking about here. Two men there, right together, working there, in the field together. One taken, the other left. One taken to eternal life, and the other left to eternal hell, is the way I look at what he's talking about here. Two women grinding together. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. Let's be sure that we are ready. We are prepared to meet our God. And we will not be left. He has promised, I will abide with you until the end. He has promised to give to each and every one that asks that repent of their sins. That repent and put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. He has promised to give to you a new birth. And in that new birth comes the power of God. And with that then we'll be able to understand what he's talking about here. And we will be prepared. And we will be taken. Not left. But we will be taken. With our Lord and our Savior. And they answered and said unto him. Where Lord? And he said unto them. Wheresoever the body is. Thither will the eagles be gathered together. We can look around and we can see today. You might see an animal or something. That has died. But there will be these big birds there that has come. He says eagles, but there will be all different kinds sometimes. Maybe we don't have that many eagles around here. But we have other birds that will be coming there because that is where they will be able to get their food. And they are there. They will be a flock. They come and they gather to where that food is. And that's what he's talking about with us. Whithersoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. Where the body of Christ is, that is where his church will be. That is where the righteous will be. And working there with him where the body of Christ is. That spirit, where the spirit of the Holy Ghost is. That is where his people will be gathered together. Worshiping and hearing his word. And they answered and said unto him, listen to that again, where, Lord, they asked him, he says, where will it be? Where will this be taken place? Wheresoever the body is, and that can be wherever. And what does he say also in another place, where two or three are gathered together in my name? I will be in the midst of him. And that body, that spiritual body of Christ, can be wherever he People put, make themselves worthy for it to be there. And we can only make ourselves worthy by asking, by repenting and receiving. And then we will know where that spiritual body is. And we will be there. And he says, I am there the door. I will knock on that door and all he that opens, I will come unto them and sup with them, and they will sup with me. And I will abide with them until the end. 
He will be there with all the righteous as long as they want it. He will be there. He will work with us. He is not quick to cast aside. Let's remember what he said there. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. And that generation of the wicked has come all the way along until now. And people are rejecting his word today. Trying to turn his word into a lie. Have been taking his word and turning it into a lie. That it might fit their wicked and lustful ways here upon the earth. But he says we must put these things aside. We must get them out of our life. There is nothing evil in righteousness. And if we have that new spirit within us, then that's the spirit of God. And that is a righteous spirit that is there. Don't let Satan defile it with sin. But if you see that it is his, flee to Jesus Christ and overcome. Flee to him and overcome by using the power that he has to give to us. <clears throat> I'd like to turn over to Genesis and read some in there about some of the things that we've just been talking about this morning about Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah and the things that was taking place in that day. We'll start reading first of all here in the 13th chapter of Genesis. We'll start reading here in the 8th verse. Just see a little bit about what was taking place there. And why I'll start reading there in the 7th verse. And there was a strife between the herdmen of Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Presonite dwelled then in the land. And here was Abram and Lot. God had blessed them tremendously. They had great flocks of animals there and it had gotten to where it was not able the land for them to be together it was not good for them to be there the land couldn't suffice to produce all the, the grass and the water and whatever that they needed there for all of those herds and Abram said unto Lot let there be no strife I pray thee between me and thee and between my herdsmen and thy herdsmen for we are brethren. Now listen here. I want you to see what was taking place here. Abram and Lot. And Abram was a righteous man. God was working closely within him. Lot was his nephew. And he had been blessed greatly by being there with Abram. And Abram looked around and he saw that. He, see, he saw the strife that was happening between the two groups of people there. And Abram looked upon it and he said, I pray thee, between the, let there be no strife between us. And between my herdsmen and thy herdsmen is not the whole land before thee. Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take to the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. I want you to look at the spirit there that was in this man. He had all these great herds, but he was willing to just let his nephew take whatever he saw fit that was the best place for him to be able to go. And he says, whatever you take, he says, I will go in the other direction there doesn't matter to me. I will go to there. And Lot lifted up his eyes, and behold, all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zor. And Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, 
and they separated themselves one from the other. And Abram dwelt in the land of Cana, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent toward Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. I want you to stop and think and look here what was going on here. Lot looked around and he saw all these wonderful the places there throughout this land here, this eastern part. How that it had was well watered, maybe nice lush grass there for his cattle to eat. Trees, all that he said that like he needed, a great plain there of Jordan. And it was well watered everywhere, it says. And that was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. And he says it was even as the garden of the Lord. The garden of the Lord would have been a beautiful place and could have been even referencing the garden of Eden there. How beautiful this place was. Like the land of Egypt. As thou comest unto Zohar. A town there. But what was taking place? And Lot chose him all of that. He wanted to get into that and closer to these towns. He was looking for himself. He was looking out for Lot. And what can I do to look out for myself here, he says, and thinking more in terms of the worldly things. But Abram, just wherever, Lord, you want me to dwell, he says, I'll dwell. And he dwelled in the land of Canaan. And Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain. Dwelled in the cities. A place very worldly. And pitched his tent toward Sodom. Getting closer and closer to the things of this world. To people living in that manner. Unrighteous men. And it says, but the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. A very bad place. And we can look around throughout the world today and we can see things in this identical situation, basically, that we can see throughout the world today. People exceedingly wicked and sinners. Now, that can be right in our life also. That we can be wicked and sinners right in our life. If we don't put Jesus Christ and God the Father first, there is no different with us than them. And the Lord said unto Abram, after the lot was separated himself from him, Lift up now thine eyes and look from the, from the place where thou art northward and southward, and eastward, and westward, and all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. You see a difference? One man here, God was working with him. The other, I don't believe that God was leading him into that, and God leading him there into close proximity of all this wickedness that was going on and as you can see as we read on what took place there all of these things happening one I believe was walking upright with the Lord the other one was seeking more of a had a worldly mind and was seeking what can I accomplish and, and get here upon the earth and let's go on and let's read and see some of the things that took place there. Let's read in the, a little bit in the 18th chapter of Genesis. A lot of things taking place in this chapter. Let's start reading it in the ninth, ninth verse. 
there had been two angels that had come by. And they stopped there. And, they, and, and Abram was able to realize that, that who they were, and he had stopped them. And they had given them, he had fed them, and they were there, and they were telling now Abram what was about to happen to him and Sarah. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind him. Now Abram and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? And the Lord said unto Abram, Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? Is it a thing too hard for the Lord at the time appointed? I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. And here, just speaking and telling what was about to happen here. A marvelous thing. This woman, Sarah, was close to 100 years old. And her husband was approximately the same age also. The time of her childbearing had gone away. And she was hearing someone prophesying or saying that she would have a child. And in her mind, in herself, she laughed about it and said, How can this be? I am old and these things are gone away. But what did he say? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too hard for the Lord today in our life? God had promised this. And it was going to be fulfilled. At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not. For she was afraid and said, Nay, but thou didst lie, laugh. And the men arose up from thence and looked toward Sodom. And Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, I will, Shall I hide from Abraham? the thing which I shall do. And he was now, these men were about to go on into Sodom. That was where they were headed on their journey. And the Lord said, here is a man that I have worked with. Here is my servant here upon the earth. He said, shall I hide this from him of what I will do? And he said that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and all nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. Now listen to what he said. This is what the Lord was speaking about Abraham. For I know him. He can know you. And he can know me. That he will command his children and his household after him. That he will follow me. He will do the things that I've asked him to do. And he'll command his children and do those things. And today that is what he is telling for us parents. To bring up your children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. That is a commandment for us to do. Let's follow it. And let's have this judgment within us that the Lord would be able to say to us shall keep the way of the Lord and do judge, justice and judgment that the Lord may bring up Abraham that which he has spoken of him and that we might do these things that we might be able to receive that was which was spoken of Jesus Christ that we might be able to receive that new birth that eternal life because we are following what he is asking for us to do and the Lord said, Behold, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, 
And because their sin is very grievous. Now this was a few years later after the way I look at it. That what was taking place here. After Sodom had, or Lot had chosen the, the part that he did. And Abraham now his name had been changed. And now he was here living in the area that he had chosen. Or that he had gone to. God was working mightily within him and now he was about to give him a son that his, that his seed would be great as the sand of the sea because of Abraham, because he was a righteous person following God, because he believed in God and his faith, righteousness was imputed into him because he had faith in God. He was not able to have that power that you and I have. He was not able to have that new spirit within him. But he was able to follow and keep the commandments of what God would ask for him to do. And he knew that that was something that he needed to follow and to put his faith and trust there. I will go down and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it which is coming to me and if not I will know and the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom but Abram stood yet before the Lord Abraham stood yet before the Lord now here these men he had, I believe that God was just bringing and showing him what was about to happen that this was such a wicked place Sodom and Gomorrah he says there was great, their sin was great, very grievous in the sight of God. And God was going down to send these men to make sure that that is what was happening to theirs. The way I look at it, he was sending them and he says that I go now to see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it, to the, according to what he, is, he was hearing and seeing. He says I'm going to send these men down there. And the men turned and they started to go. And then Abraham was stood there before the Lord. And he starts this discourse of asking him all about several things there about, no, wait a minute, God, let's just read through and see what he actually was saying. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? He knew that Lot was there in that town. His nephew... And he, had, he said, now, there's, he felt like that there was righteous people that was there. He says, God, will you destroy the righteous people that is there in that city with the wicked because of the wicked is, is there and their sins are grievous? Will you destroy the righteous? And God would never do that. God would give the righteous the opportunity to come out. Or he says here as he goes through, he says, Preadventure there be fifty righteous um, within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for fifty righteous people therein? That it, that be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Abraham was just bringing and pleading his cause before God there. And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. The mercy of God there. He says, If I find 50 there, I'll spare it. If that's the case. And Abraham answered and said, Behold now, I have taken unto, upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. Preadventure there shall lack five of the fifty righteous. Will thou destroy all the city for the lack of five? And he said, If I find there forty and five, I will not destroy it. Again, this is the mercy of God. And God, Abraham pleading for him. To look into this carefully. But he was talking to a God that knew all things. And he spake unto him yet again and said, Preadventure there be forty found. And he said, I will not do it for forty's sake. And he said unto him, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. 
Preadventure there shall be 30 found there. And he said, I will not do it if I find 30 there. And he said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Preadventure there shall be 20 found. And he said, I will not destroy it for 20's sake. And he said, O Lord, O let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak yet but this once. Preadventure ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for the ten's sake. And the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communing with Abraham. And Abraham returned to his place. The Lord had been there had talked to him, had told him all about what was taking place there and what was going to happen. And think about these two great cities there, Sodom and Gomorrah. And he says that if I find ten righteous people there, I will not destroy it. Think about what we read a while ago there. He says, in the days of the Son of Man, it will be like the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. In the days when he comes back here to the earth, he says it, this earth will be very similar to that. That there will be great numerous people, numbers of people eating, drinking, going about their daily thing with no concern about that spiritual life. No concern about it. Just living after having a lustful lifestyle. Just living after that type of lifestyle. And not putting their faith and trust and even thinking about what is about to happen to me. But what can I do to serve this flesh? What can I do to entertain this flesh? And satisfy the lust of the flesh. That's what was going on there in those days. And there came two angels to Sodom at evening. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up and met them. And he bowed himself and his face toward the ground. And, and he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, unto thy ser your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and you shall rise up early and go your ways. And they say, Nay, for we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him and entered into his house. And he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. Lot again here, bringing these people in and feeding them, doing the things. But it does not say anything about him asking, well, what is your journey? What, what have you asked? Why are you here to this town? But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, come past the house round about, both old and young, and the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. Now here was this wicked sinful group of people that their sins were grievous that their sins were great in Sodom as we have read about and in other interpretations of this it, it talks about these things he says that where are the men that came to you came into your house that came into our city today he says that bring them out unto us that we may have sex with them a homosexual type thing going on in that Land, if you go back and you read some about history, that is what was going on there in Sodom and Gomorrah. And that is what some of the other interpretations of the Bible says there. It says that we may know them. And Lot went out the door unto them, and he shut the door behind him. Lot went out to try to appease this group of people and to send them away. I believe Lot was understanding that there was something special about these men. And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him. And he said, I pray thee, brethren, do not so wickedly. Well, Lot warning them, 
Don't be so wicked. Don't let these things happen. He says, Behold, I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray thee, bring them out unto you, and do ye unto them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. It came under the protection of his roof. I don't understand all about what he meant there by sending his daughters out there. But I do know this, that he was sending it, I look at it this way, that here he was telling these men that the woman's, it is man and woman to be together, not men and men, as we hear about today. But it was a very bad thing there that was going on. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof, and they said, Stand back. And he said, This one fella, stand back. And they said again. Now here, these people were now telling Lot, Get out of the way. We're going to go in and we're going to take these men. And he and they had something to say about what Lot was saying. This one fellow came in to sojourn and he will needs be a judge. Lot had come into their town, come out from afar. He was a foreigner there, but he had moved into the town there, living among this wicked generation. And here these people are looking upon him and he says, Now, you're a sojourner. You come, come into our town and now you're going to tell us how we need to live? Jesus Christ came into the world and people looked upon him the same way. You're going to come here and try to tell us how we need to live our life? And they rejected him. These people here rejecting the word of Lot there, what he had to say to them. He said, get out of the way. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house of them and shut to the door the angels there. The men that God had sent there was able to just open the door, reach out, and pull Lot back in, give him the protection there from the people. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness. The power of God came upon those wicked men there that was trying to destroy Lot and these angels. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. They were not able to find the door. They could not do anything. They were just roaming around. And that's what the wicked will do today. They are blind to the truth. Just roaming around. Seeking, but not able to find. These people were seeking that door, but could not find it. Because they were filled with wickedness and filled with sin. And today, if we are filled with that worldly lifestyle, if we are filled with wickedness and sin in our life today, we cannot find that door of Jesus Christ. We've got to give that up. We've got to repent. We've got to see our wretchedness and repent of our sin and be saved. And the men said in the lot, Hast thou here any besides son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. Now here that he's starting to tell them now. For we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord has sent us to destroy it. Now he's warning them. And he's telling them they're, now they're telling Lot, why they have come. And he's given them, he's given them the opportunity. He says, now, do, <clears throat> do you have any son-in-laws or sons? <clears throat> and thy daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in the city, whoever you have here in the city, bring them out of this place. Go and talk to them and bring them out. Let them know that this place is going to be destroyed. 
For we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord shall send, has, has sent us to destroy it. And Lot went out and he spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed to as one that mocked unto his son-in-laws. And when the morning arose, then the angels hasted Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. He went out and he warned these people, and they looked upon him as just one mocking. I know the Lord has warned us over and over and over on things and how we should be living our life and how we should get the lust and the things of this world out of our life. Now are we mocking Him or are we willing to get up and walk away from those type things? Lot went out and spake to his people about it. They rejected him. Now in the morning the angels hastened Lot. The, the angels told him. He says, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, the two daughters that he had there in his home, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city, lest you be consumed also when we destroy it in the sinful part of this city. And while he lingered, the men laid hold of upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters and the Lord being merciful unto him and they brought him forth and set him without the gate, without the city. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay, stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain lest you be, thou be consumed. The angel's just telling them exactly what you need to do so that you are not consumed in this destroying of these two cities. And Lot said unto them, Oh, not so, my Lord. Behold now, thy servant hath found grace. Behold now, thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life. And I cannot escape to the mountain lest some evil take me and I die. And here, these men telling him what to do. And here was Lot looking after, looking to himself again and saying, I can't do that. Have mercy on me. He says, Behold now, this city is near to flee into, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. Lot wanting something different from what the Lord was telling him. But the Lord, was he, he allowed him to go on into those things. And he said unto them, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing, that I will not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou become thither. Therefore the name of the city was called Zor. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zor. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities, that which grew Upon the ground. He destroyed it all. The plain. All the things there that Lot had looked upon. And he thought was so grand. And he had taken his stuff there. But he was living among a wicked group of people. And God destroyed it. He did not destroy Lot. But he destroyed all the things that he had. And it all went away. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. He had told them to go, leave, escape for thy life. Look not behind thee. Don't look back. Don't go back into that house trying to take with you those things and having a desire of the things in that old house 
the lust of the flesh, the worldly things, the pride of life, don't look back with that kind of desire. Lot's wife looked back at that city. He had commanded them, look not behind thee. And don't stay in that plain because I'm going to destroy it all. But his wife looked back with a desire to be back into that, with, her, with that lifestyle that she had. They were probably living a very lavish, maybe, lifestyle because they had a great amount of substance. But she was turned into a pillar of salt. She lost out. It was good for nothing. She lost. It all went away. And Abraham got up early in the morning to, to the place where he stood before the Lord and he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain and behold and lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham and he sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot dwelt. Look at what was taking place, how one, what they were seeking after, and how the other, what the other two men there, one was seeking more of the things of the world, the other was just seeking whatever you want me to do, Lord. One lost it all, and the other was able to continue on in the things that he had here upon the earth. That is what he wants us to be looking to and knowing and understanding today. As let's put it into the hands of Jesus Christ. Let's accept his word and let's follow him. Get that carnal mind, that carnal mind, that carnal nature out of our life. I want to read a few verses here in, in Peter, Second Peter. <clears throat> this will be Second Peter in the second chapter of what some says about what took place. And those We'll start reading there at the third verse. And through covenants shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their, da and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly and delivered just Lot, vexed with his filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. And God delivered him out of that, but he went through a lot because of the way the things that he was, I believe, the way that he was living his life and being in that type of situation. God delivered, he says, just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. But I want us to think here, that sixth verse, and he says, And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. Now that's where I want us to think about, and we see what God did to the wicked and to the ungodly in that day, and he's saying the same thing here for us. That if we don't live in accordance with how that 
The Scripture is laid out for us, and if we don't have that new birth, we don't repent of our sins and live that, let that righteous Spirit direct us and, and lead us, that these things will be rained out, the same type thing will be rained out upon us, just as the people, the, the wicked was destroyed in the flood, and the wicked was destroyed in Solomon and Gomorrah, the wicked upon the earth today will be destroyed by the fire that comes down out of heaven and destroys them and casts them into hell at that second death, at that great judgment there after the millennial period. All that will take place there. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, I want to remember this good, into ashes. He condemned them. Condemned their wicked ways that we've read about in numerous places of how that they were so sinful and how it was grievous to God. Making them an example. Now we ought to know that He's not, we're not going to escape the same type of raft if we don't use the power of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ, to give us power over this body and over the lust of that. We can have it and we will if we will just put our trust and faith there. I want to turn to, to Mark and read just a verse or two, a few verses there in Mark that he has to say about some of the same things there. This is the sixth chapter of Mark. We'll start here at the seventh verse, sixth chapter of Mark. And he called unto him the twelve and began to send them forth by two and two, and he gave them power over unclean spirits. And he commanded them that they should take nothing for their journey, save a staff only, no scrip, no bread, no, no money in their purse, but be shod with sandals. And put on two coats, and not put on two coats. And he said unto them, In what place soever you enter into an house, there abide till you depart from that place. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear you, when you depart thence, shake off the dust under your feet for a testimony against them. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Now he's told us how, and he, we've seen how that he's destroyed them. We have seen there how that he says that, that if we live in that same type lifestyle, we're going to be destroyed. But listen there what he's saying. He says, now go and you preach about Jesus Christ. Go and preach the gospel that I have given to you, that I have talked to you about. Go, I've given you a spirit that you can overcome and cast out devils. You can do all these things that you've got the power over unclean spirits. He says, now go and preach. And that is what he is commanding today. For me to preach the gospel simple, pure, and free to each and every one of you. And I believe that these same things apply to us just as much as it did to, that, to the group of people, to the towns and the places that they, these men were going into in that day. He says, And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear you, when you depart thence, shake off the dust under your feet for a testimony against them. If you do not hear, you do not, you've heard the word, you've preached the word, he's telling them. And if they do not hear you, if they reject your words, he says, shake off the dust of your feet against them as a testimony against them that they rejected God. 
He says it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. They've heard the word of Jesus Christ. They heard that. They rejected it. Those same people may be in that first resurrection. In that first death, that they might be because they heard the word of Jesus. They heard about the power that God could give to them. They heard about that new birth. But they rejected it. So people in Sodom and Gomorrah had not had that opportunity to reject Jesus Christ. They were just they were living a sinful, grievous life lifestyle but they were not rejecting the power of God that these people hear that they were going out to preach to and therefore that's why I look upon it that they may go into hell quicker because they rejected Jesus Christ than those that never knew him and they would be condemned after that millennial period. Let's be sure that we're receiving his word. And let's accept it and let's live by it. And let's know and have hope of eternal life. I want everybody to hear today to understand. That that is a promise from Jesus Christ. That if you will repent of your sins. And have faith that he can forgive you. And have faith that he will give you that new spirit. You can receive. And you can have eternal life. Don't let Satan deceive you. Hear the word. All of these situations, people were warned. Some adhered, but most rejected. Let's be one of those that hear the word and accepts and lives and has full faith in Jesus Christ. Repent of your sins as, they, as Peter told the people to do. Repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. We'll bring this meeting to a close. We'll sing number 271, Savior like a shepherd, lead us. Number 271. Thank you.
few parts of that song, I'd like to just, Thou hast promised to receive us, what we were just talking about. Poor and sinful though we be, Thou hast mercy to relieve us, grace to cleanse us, and power to free. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the word of Jesus Christ. Blessed Jesus, hear thy children when they pray. That is my prayer for each and every one of you today. That God be with you and that God hear your prayers. Go to him. It's a promise to cleanse us of our sins if we repent. Let us pray. To God the Father, we thank you for all you've done for us. We thank you for the many blessings that we have received. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit most of all, for your power, for your love and mercy. And we beg for guidance and we beg for spiritual wisdom and knowledge that we are able to do the things that you would have for us to do with the things that you've entrusted into our hands here upon the earth. Be with us as we go through this upcoming week that your will be done in us. Thank you for all you've done that we can have eternal life here upon the earth. Thank you for your son. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.